So at the Academy of Hope, we learn that within every negative situation and or circumstance, there's a hidden treasure to be discovered in a greater grace to be possessed, much greater than the evil of the day. So we, in this Academy of Hope, we are, our, our job is to get you to have a shift of understanding and have a, a, a different perspective on what negative situations and circumstances are bringing. Okay. Within the hope culture, we are becoming solution-oriented and answer-driven. We are understanding that problems have a purpose. Okay. This is where we're shifting. This is going to give you hope. This you need to understand. Problems have a purpose purpose. If you, you need a negative charge and a positive charge, actually say a positive charge and a negative charge. And when they come together, they have a, a, a fission reaction. Have a, a, when, when, there is a reaction that happens that produces heat, that produces power. Neg negativity of the day. When you enter into your day, when you wake up, when you enter this day, sufficient is the evil thereof. That's what the Bible says. You can just Google it. I say, where does it say uh, evil? Uh, there's enough evil for this day. You just Google that and you'll find it. But there's sufficient evil of every day waiting for you. <laughs> Problems have a purpose. What does that mean? I didn't like that scripture at, at first neither. But here's the deal. Because of the evil of the day and, and the goodness of God in me and, and the, the, the power that is already in me, the, the goodness of God that is on the inside, there's a demand of power. When Jesus went into the wilderness, he got baptized in the River Jordan. He came out of there. He was led to go into the wilderness. He was in the midst of the world. He was led by the Holy Spirit. Really important. That when you are in your wilderness, that you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he's going to take care of you. He's going to sustain you. He's going to keep you. So that's another, that's a side note. But here we go. Jesus went in. He got baptized in the Holy Spirit in the River Jordan. Went into the wilderness. Went through powerful resistance. Went through um, temptations and went through peril and problems and pain. All these things were coming against him. Less the eyes, less the flesh, pride of life. Why? For one purpose, to produce power. He went, the Bible says, clearly says, you can look this up too. He, the, after he came out of Jordan, filled with the spirit, went into the wilderness, was tested and tried. Less the eyes, less the flesh, pride of life, came out full of power. Problems have a purpose. You need to say this right now. Every pain, every problem, every peril has a payday. Everything you are going through. See, we're solution-oriented and answer-driven. We're not dictated to by circumstantial evidence in the temporary realm. We belong to the Academy of Hope. We are creating a culture of hope. You have hope. You can have hope. Why? Because problems have a purpose. Every pain, every problem, every pro every persecution, every peril, every trauma, all of these things have a potential payday. And I say potential now because you need to understand you have potential. The, the, the greater grace, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Deuteronomy 28, 7 says, when the enemy is coming before your face, he's being defeated before your face and fleeing in seven other directions. You need to understand, when the, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God raises up a standard in life. But you got to make a demand. 
You got to make a demand on the grace of God. You got to make a demand on the glory of God. You got to make a demand on the greater grace that's been made available because of the pain, the problem, the peril, or the persecution. It's up to you to call in. Everything is voice activated. Your deliverance is in your declaration. Come on now. You need to you need to speak up. You need to stand up. You need to decree and declare the answers and the solutions and the greater grace. Yesterday, I was crying out, leaning over my sink, weeping before the Lord, calling on the greater authority and the greater power of God to come into my life, to be able to load, manage, and handle all the things that I'm having to do in this season because of all the peril and all the problems, all the persecution that other people are going through. And I'm I'm seeing people uh, healed in, in, in the hospital and leave within a half an hour when their kidneys are shutting down and their heart condition is 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 is, is going wonky and their blood pressure is down and all these things and, and they don't know what to do and they've lost hope themselves. And I, and I just get on the phone and I pray with them. And one half hour later, they're walking out of the hospital. I gotta have greater power. I gotta have a greater authority. And it's available for all of us, ladies and gentlemen. We've gotta stop believing the circumstantial evidence. We need to build a culture of hope. So every pain, every problem, every peril, every persecution must have a payday and it's a potential. You got to call it in. Did you hear that? Every cross will have a crown. Say that. Every cross will have a crown. So David was on a 6,205 day journey on day 6,203 of the 6,205 day journey, all hell breaks loose. And it's the fifth significant moments where he can take offense and stop the drink. But he doesn't. Three days later, he comes back. And it, it, this whole story is found in 1 Samuel chapter, um, well, I, I guess several chapters, but it culminates in in 1 Samuel chapter, or sorry, 2 Samuel chapter 30, verse Eight, where where the, the men are talking of stoning him and 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 the the Amalekites came come in and they burden down Ziklag and they take all the women and the children all the resources all the everything is gone and the city's burnt down and they don't know what to do. David has a better word. They go down. They come back. They recover all. They're standing in the midst of Ziklag and the place that almost destroyed David is a place that David received the crown. The very the very place that almost destroyed, killed, and stopped the progress of the culmination of the fullness of God's dream for David almost stopped. But the very place when you persevere and you keep going and, and you build hope, because when you when you have tribulation and you pers persevere, you build character, which, which causes hope to come. When you do that, in the midst of the impossibilities, David was in the midst of a possibility. 600 men were talking about stoning him. He was already rejected by his, by his uh, father, his brothers, the king, the enemy. And now the, the ones that he trained all these years and saved them and rescued them. And all these things are speaking of stoning him. And he doesn't give up. He turns aside. He kazaks himself. He strengthens himself. And he gets back. And he they go down, they recover on this, and they're back in Ziklag, in their midst of the smoldering, in the midst of, but they have their children, they have all their resources, plus much, much more, which he gave to the elders of Israel, strategic. And he's standing there, and the very people group, an Amalekite comes with Saul's crown and gives it to him. Understand every cross that you're bearing has the potential of a crowning moment where you have a greater victory than the evil of the day. Every atrocity has a greater abundance of grace, God's enabling power. And 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, and God is able to make all his grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you'll abound to every good work and charitable donation. Nothing can stop you. You need to know the greater grace is available to you. Why? Several reasons, but one of them is so you can produce a hope culture. God will never send you into a storm that you are not more than able to dominate. 
Did you hear that? God will never send you into a storm that you have that you are not more than able to dominate. So problems, storms, crucibles, and atrocities are to empower us and propel us and further and faster than we would not have had the opportunity had the situation not come against us. That's why, and hear the word of the Lord right here. This is huge, 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 huge. This is the core of the Academy of Hope in the development and in the operation of it. And that's why I say this with boldness. We do not just solve problems in the Academy of Hope and in building the heavenly culture of hope here on the earth. We don't just solve problems. We use problems. Stop just solving problems. You need to use the resources that God placed in the problem. The greater grace, the resource, the greater resources that God placed into that problem, that pain, that trauma before time began. What are you saying to me, Barry? Are you saying to me that when I was being abused as a child, that there was a greater grace available waiting for me to call into my life? I want to tell you, yes, 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 and yes. There is a, a grace that is incorruptible that you can pull into the now. You can go back in time. You can decree and declare that greater grace that God prepared for you at that moment when you were abused. Tanya, I'm speaking to you right now. You're listening to this right now. And I want to tell you, Tanya, when you were eight years old, you were being horribly abused. And I want to tell you right now, I speak to the very day before you were first ever abused. And I speak to that grace level that was in that place. And I'm calling it up through the time of your life. And you're now 24 years of age. And it is coming upon you right now, Tanya. Receive the greater grace of God. We are going to use this. And you're going to be healed. You're going to be delivered. You're going to be set free. It's going to be like it was somebody else's trauma, somebody else's abuse. I decree and declare we are using that problem today to produce power and deliverance and health and wholeness in Jesus mighty name. Tanya received that. Can you please write to us? You can put a, uh, a comment in YouTube or wherever you're listening. I think you're watching it on actually on YouTube. It's not whatever. I I'm just, uh, I'm just the, the, the messenger, but Tanya, your life is never going to be the same again. We don't just solve problems. We use them. There is something, there's a greater grace within the trauma within the situation that brings to you a enabling power to be propelled. Tanya is being propelled today. She's being healed today. Tanya received. And anybody else, this is a word of knowledge. You, if you've been abused, you need to you need to go back the day before the abuse began. If you were in, in a traumatic accident, go back to moments when you're driving that car. And, and Ron, you were driving a car and, 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 and all of a sudden somebody sideswipes you and you ended up losing, you know, mobility and all these. I want to tell you, there's a greater grace for you, Ron, right now. Receive the greater grace. I call it one moment before the accident, that greater grace to come right up to the timeline and come into your life now in Jesus mighty name. We don't just solve problems. We don't just overcome problems. We don't just dust ourselves back, dust ourselves off and then uh, say, oh, well, I guess, you know, bad things happen to good people too. No, stop it. Don't just, I mean, that's important that you're not controlled or contained and you get back up. I love that. But understand there's much more available. You need to understand that there's a greater grace waiting for your voice to activate it. Call it into your life. You can, I, I do this with people oftentimes uh, in, in prayer lines and in, 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 in counseling and things. And I just say, you know, and I begin, I, I remember praying for this guy in my office several years ago. And he, and um, 
I just said to him, I said, you have arthritis in your hands. And, and uh, he was telling me about how painful they were. And I said, that happened. Uh, and I gave him the age it happened. And I said it was an ac a, an accident that happened. I think, it, I believe it was a, a tractor accident. And so I just began to call out these details uh, to him. And he said, oh, my Lord. Oh, my word. And his, and his, his hand stopped hurting immediately there there are you can address these things you can you can operate in time you can redeem the time because the days are toil they're they're hard on people we need to bring hope to people we need to bring deliverance to people so i might hit on that a bit more in just a minute but within the culture of hope the hope academy we are recalibrating the way we think can you hear that we need to recalibrate. We need to view darkness differently. Um, you you should never be uh, overwhelmed by the valley of the shadow of death. You might find yourself. Don't be overwhelmed with a pit of despair. Don't be overwhelmed by the trauma. Don't be overwhelmed. Understand that God will never put you into a storm that you don't have, that you're not way more powerful than the storm. You will not be sent into a storm that he hasn't given you power over. Sometimes you need to speak peace to the storm. Sometimes you need to redire redirect the storm. Sometimes you need to sail through the storm. Sometimes the storm is going to bring up and bring to the surface great treasures from the deep and throw it on the beach of your life. Don't be just dictated. Don't have knee-jerk reactions to things and don't run for cover all the time. The Lord says, run for cover, run for cover. He says, duck, duck. If he says, stand and see the deliverance of the Lord, you stand and you face that storm right dead on. And you say, shut your mouth, come down. You're not allowed to face me. Amen. So in the Academy of Hope, we're not trying to get the victory. We live from victory. I'm going to say I'm going to say a couple of these things together over again. Within the culture of hope, we are recalibrating the way we think. We are not trying to get the victory, we are living from victory. So every day is not a fight for survival, but every day is an another opportunity to increase our levels of authority in the very areas that the enemy has tried to steal, kill and destroy in. How much are you getting out of this, guys? Uh, um, please let me know because this is this is life transforming stuff. This is this is this I've tested on the litmus of my life. The litmus test of this stuff is me in surviving. I was abused. I was rejected. I, I've I've been betrayed. I, I was a, a white looking guy who has native blood on a, raised in a, a native territory. Where the white, worst thing you can call somebody is a white man. I I grew up in the midst of all all of this. Uh, you know, unfortunately, my parents broke up when I was three years old. I I lived my life without my mom, and 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 God healed that, and we're back in relationship. But it, was, it took like thirty one years later that I held her hands and I released her from you know condemnation and shame, and and I and I love her, and I don't mean to discredit her. Those problems happen. And, and situations happen, but I, I'm not I'm not a victim of the enemy's seeming victories at the destroying of family units. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor because I live from victory. So I'm going to read this again. So every day is not a fight for survival. I am not a survivor only. I'm a thriver and I have an abundant mentality. I rest in the goodness of the Lord. I am in Christ Jesus. That means I'm in all the resources in Christ Jesus that he has in glory. I'm not fighting to get by. I'm not surviving life. I am living it to the maximum potential. Amen. Every day is not, not for survival, but every day is another opportunity to increase my levels of authority in the very areas that the enemy tried to steal, kill, and destroy in. The enemy never has the last laugh. The enemy never has the last word. We will always have the eternal last word. The recalibration of, 
of our thoughts causes us to wake up every day having the revelation that we have already won the war. Knowing that I have already that I am already in Christ Jesus and he has already defeated death, hell, the grave, the enemy and all of his minions. I quoted that earlier. But you need to hear this. We re, we are recalibrating our thoughts that we wake up every day with an A++. I wake up every day with hope. Hope no longer disappoints me. I'm waking up with what is sure and certain. I am waking up with Elpis God type hope. I'm waking up in the midst of a God of hope. I am living from the midst of the presence of the God of hope. I am living in hope. Hmm. So every battle, hear the word of the Lord, every battle that is trying to face us today is not allowed to stay face to our face, but each and every one of them, we must put under our feet and under our authority and gain authority. What you kill, you get to keep. What you lay down, what you give completely to God, it is something that you have the potential to receive maximum of that harvest from that seed that you sowed. Every battle that I, that is trying to face me is does not have the the worthiness to stay face to face to my face. The enemy is a dust eater. And I, I'm going a little off script here. And I do that. I've been doing that all episodes here. <laughs> but hear this. When the enemy in the beginning, when he deceived Adam and Eve and God cursed the, the serpent and he cut his legs out from underneath him, he has nothing to stand on any longer. Do you hear that? At the end of the age, we will look at the one that shook the nation. They will say, this is the one? We'll be amazed on how much power we gave him. Some people say that the serpent, because of the because of our being wowed by him and, 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 and buying into his deception, we've created a dragon. Of the, the, the serpent of Genesis becomes the dragon of Genesis of, of Revelation. Now, I don't know if I buy into that completely, but there is some concepts that I believe in, in that. So the enemy, when he got cursed by God, his legs were cut out from under, he had no more understanding. And he, the Bible says that he, on his belly, he would crawl on the earth, on the dirt, and he would eat the, the dust of the ground. Why am I saying that to you? Because the Bible says that you were formed from the dust in the ground. When you face your enemy every day, you need to understand he is the one that can consume dust when you get at his level. Get out of the dirt. Get out of the second heaven. Get into the third heaven. Get in your mentality. Set your affections. According to Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, set your affections. Set your focus. Set your gaze on the things that are above in heaven where you are seated with Christ Jesus. Do not focus on the things of the earth. Stop facing your enemy. The, the only thing you want to exchange glory with is God. You don't want to stay exchange glory with anything else. Why exchange glory with something lesser than? Why give somebody your glory who is less than you? What does that mean? Who's less than you? You're greater than the enemy. You have greater authority, greater power, greater position. You are seated in heavenly places. He crawls on the dirt. Stop getting down in the dirt. Stop believing him. Stop believing that you got to face your problem. We don't face our problems. We use them. Stop facing the enemy and start facing your God. Well, I got to be, I got to be, you know, I got to be wise at, at, at what the enemy's doing. Do you? Or does the Bible say this? Be excellent what is good and be innocent at in what is evil. Does the Bible say, behold, I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the evil one, and nothing shall by any means hurt you? Does it mean that you're coming down with your foot or are you facing your enemy? Stop 
trying to behead the enemy. Stop facing your enemy like David. You are far greater than David was. Oh, what? You, Barry, you just said that you're that I'm greater than David. Yes, you live in under a much more excellent covenant. David was not a part of the new covenant. He had some covenantal teaching. He had some Christophanies. He had some things and some elements that 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 were evidence of the things that come in the throne of David. It's never. There's always going to be somebody on the throne. Yeah, all that's true. But he wasn't what you are. One with the spirit of the living God. He was still living underneath an old covenant. He was still living underneath the law of the Mosaic that was given to him at Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai. You, you live underneath a much more excellent covenant. And stop looking back when you need to look to God. You need to face God and exchange glory from God. When you face him, you get glory. You get his glory. He that stands face to face with God exchanges glory. Your glory for his glory. That's what happened to Moses. Is he received the glory externally. His glory was fading away. That's when he put a veil on his face. So that he could uh, present the, the truths to the children of Israel. And they wouldn't see that the glory had already passed away. The glory that you have compared to the glory that Moses had is like his, his glory is no glory at all. Okay, here it is. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse, let's just go to verse 7. But if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses uh, because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For the ministry of condemnation had glory, <clears throat> For sorry, for if the ministry of condemnation, which is the old, the law, the covenant, the law of Moses, Moses, <clears throat> for the ministry of condemnation had glory. For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much, much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in, in this respect because of the glory that excels. You ready? For if what is passing away was glorious, that which remains is much more glorious. Therefore, since we have such hope, such hope, such hope, Academy of Hope people, because we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. Let me go. Let me just skip down to verse 18. But we all with unveiled face beholding in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. We are we are exchanging as we look to him. So what am I saying? Why do I am I saying all of this? Because you need to stop facing your enemy. And you need to begin to face your God. You need to stop looking at your problem. You don't solve your problems by dwelling on your problems. Can you hear the word of the Lord? Stop dwelling. Stop trying to fix yourself. And begin to face your God. Be led by Holy Spirit. Praise your God on your worst day. You need to know you have accessibility on your worst day. When you failed God. When you sinned. When you when you clicked on something you shouldn't have clicked one too many times. When you had too many sips of alcohol. When you when you went back and you and you got you. I don't know what what what's going on in your life with the failures, but and the frailties of your flesh. But stop being wowed by the mountain. By the by, the uh, uh, situation of your of that addiction or that hereditary curse, stop being wowed by these things and begin to be wowed by God's goodness. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn and face your God again. He is faithful and just. First Corinthians nine nineteen says, "If you repent, He is faithful and re and just and will forgive your sins and purify you." from all unrighteousness. You just need to get into his presence so that you can get a spirit of repentance.
of, of repentance. You need to get into his presence so you can receive a gift of repentance, uh, the grace to repent so that you can truly repent all the way through and you can, and, and God will deal with that. Let God arise and his enemies will be scattered. How do you let God arise? You face God. You turn to the scriptures. You turn to the promises. You repent and you get into his presence. Get into his re presence before you repent even. Oh, my word. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. So we're recalibrating the way we think. Because I wake up every day, regardless of how I feel. I am not a feeling. I am not my history. I'm not my the sum total of my victories or my losses. That's not who I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 